Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'll take a look at these ESP32 camera modules. Like the name suggests, it packs an ESP32, so you've got your dual core 32-bit Extensa module here with integrated Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and a two megapixel camera over here. Plus there's a micro SD card slot here, which you can read and write files with. And then there's a really bright white LED that you can use as a flash for the camera. Now that we've got the basic hardware out of the way, let's plug a USB cable into this, open up the Arduino IDE and get to coding. Hmm. Well, it turns out there are no USB ports on these boards. The easiest way to program them is over these pins here, labeled U0R and U0T, which are the RX and TX pins for UART. So somehow we'll need a way to interface with that over USB in order to program them from the Arduino IDE. See, most ESP32 development boards have a USB controller that does this for us. That's this little chip right here. But in this case, you'll need to supply your own. Luckily, you can get USB to UART breakout modules online for pretty cheap. Unluckily, I don't happen to have one on hand for this video. Well, why not just use the one from this dev board? See, if I share the RXTX pins between the two boards, and then bypass the ESP32 module on this one by connecting its enable pin to ground, and then share power and ground pins between the two boards to power the camera module, now the Arduino IDE will be able to talk to the camera module instead of this dev board through that USB controller. Pretty cool, right? There is a catch though. In order to enable the programming mode on the camera module, I also need to connect to this IO0 pin to ground while the board is booting. For that, I'm just adding a push button that I can hold down while I power it up and that'll enter the programming mode. It's a bit annoying to have to do this every time you flash your programs to the board, but it's a lot easier than, say, connecting and disconnecting a jumper wire. And then there's another catch, which is that for some reason, every version of these modules I've seen has the reset button on the bottom of the board. So if it's plugged into a breadboard like I usually have them, the only way to hit reset is by jamming a small flathead screwdriver or something underneath them, or by disconnecting and reconnecting the power. There's at least one project designed to simplify all of this by using a breakout board that handles all of these details. I've never tried it, but it looks like a great solution if you don't want to have to deal with all of this. There's a link in the description if you're interested in that. With all of that finally out of the way, I'm ready to start programming. I've done some research into different ways to interface with these camera modules using Arduino code, and the easiest solution I've found is a library called ESP32Cam on GitHub. I'll put a link in the description for that as well. Basically, it handles the configuration details and makes it really easy to capture a picture and convert it into binary JPEG files, which is really all you need, regardless of whether you plan to write the images to an SD card or send them somewhere over Wi-Fi. And here's what a basic camera server program looks like using this library. This program will put the camera module in Wi-Fi access point mode so that devices like your phone or laptop can connect directly to it. From there, they can open up a browser and view the captured images. I've chosen to do it this way instead of having the camera module connect to an existing Wi-Fi network, because here you don't have to store your home Wi-Fi password on a device that can get lost or stolen, and it just makes the whole setup more portable. First, I'm including the libraries for the camera, the server, and for Wi-Fi then defining some constants here that will be the SSID and password for the access point that the camera module will create. So this is what you'll type into your phone, for instance, when you connect to the camera module. And obviously, you should use something harder to guess than this. Then I'm creating an instance of the web server type using port 80, which is the standard HTTP port that browsers use. And then defining this function named handle capture that will be the request handler called to serve the captured images. So first it uses that library to capture an image. And if that returned a null pointer, we'll serve an HTTP 500 status, which is the generic internal server error code so that the visiting web browser knows that something went wrong during the request. 
Otherwise, it sets the content length to be the size of that image, returns an HTTP 200, which means that everything went okay, and then sets the content type to be image slash JPEG so that the browser knows to expect an image. Then it just writes the image out to the client. And that's it. That's all it takes to capture and send an image from the camera module over HTTP. Then down here in setup, I'm defining the resolution I want and setting the pin configuration to be the AI thinker profile. So there are different versions of these camera modules that apparently use different pin configurations. The library we're using handles all of that for us, but we do still have to tell the library which version of the board we have. If AI thinker doesn't work for you, maybe you have a different version of these modules and you'll need to change this setting here. Then I'm setting the resolution and the JPEG image quality. You can increase or decrease the image quality, and obviously if you increase it, the pictures will have fewer compression artifacts, so they'll look nicer, but the file size will be larger. And you know, devices like this have a limited amount of memory, plus larger files are slower to send over the network. So you might want to play around with this setting. 80 is a pretty good medium default quality. And then I'm starting the camera module with this configuration, starting the Wi-Fi access point using that SSID and password combination defined at the beginning, and then setting that handle capture function to be the handler for any requests made to this capture.jpg path. So when the browser goes to this address, it'll call that function, which captures a picture and sends it as the response. Then I'm just starting the web server. And down here in the loop function, I'm calling this handle client method of web server, which takes care of reading all of the incoming HTTP requests and dispatching them to the right handler functions. And that's it, a basic Wi-Fi camera server in 36 lines of code. Now to flash this to the camera module, you need to have the ESP32 boards added to your Arduino IDE. I won't go over that here, but it's pretty easy. Do a quick search for adding ESP32 boards to Arduino and you'll find it right away. Once you have the ESP32 boards, the one you want to use is the ESP32 Rover module. And you can keep all of the default settings, except you want the partition scheme to be huge app. Now on the board itself, if I hold down this button while booting it up, that'll enter the programming mode. Then I can select the USB port that it's connected to and hit upload from the IDE, and that'll compile and flash the program onto the camera module. When that's complete, I need to reboot the camera module, not in programming mode. So it needs to boot without holding the button down, and then the program will start running. If I connect a phone or laptop to the SSID using the right password, and navigate a browser to this URL, which is the default host when you create an access point using the Wi-Fi library, it'll serve the image that the camera sees every time the page is refreshed. This setup is perfect if you have a script on another device downloading and storing all of the images or something, but it's not very user-friendly as is. You have to keep refreshing the browser to update the image. One thing you could do is serve an HTML page that embeds the image and does the refresh for you, or the ESP32 cam library also has a method for serving motion JPEGs, which is basically a stream of JPEGs, kind of like a streaming video. When I tried that, it was really unstable and glitchy for some reason. It may have just been my Wi-Fi connection, but I'm more interested in using this for creating time-lapse videos, so I decided to just have it capture still images. And if you want to use the flash on these boards, for the model I have, it's on pin 4, and it works just like any normal LED connected to a digital pin. These LEDs are very bright, like blindingly bright. They also get pretty hot if you leave them on for a long time, so I would recommend only turning it on long enough to capture a picture and then turning it off. To do that, you just need to set the pin mode for the LED to be output, and then in the request handler, set it to high, wait just a tiny bit to make sure the LED fully lights up, then capture the image, and turn the LED off as soon as that's done. Now when I take pictures, it looks like this. So yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. If you want to use the SD card to save your pictures there instead of using Wi-Fi, there are tons of tutorials online for that. Just search for Arduino SD card or something. Personally, I find that approach less convenient 
because then you have to move the SD card around to move the files, and SD cards corrupt really easily. So I use Wi-Fi, but both options are there. One other point that I want to bring up from a security perspective is that I would strongly advise against port forwarding this to the internet. I understand the urge of wanting it to be remotely accessible to use as a pet cam or something, but unless you really know what you're doing, don't do that. If you need it to be remotely accessible, I would have the camera module act as an HTTP client rather than a server and have it upload the images to an external host that you trust. Because it's one thing to have a locally accessible access point running a server like I used here, it's a whole other can of worms if you port forward this to the entire internet. So don't do that. One more thing. This camera module was sent to me by the folks at IC Station. I put a link in the description for that. But they also gave me a promo code to share with all of you. So if you do want to pick up one of these modules, or anything else from their website, you can get 15% off by using the code DAVYICS. I don't get any commission or anything like that, but I mean, it's 15% off. So if you need anything that they sell, go check it out. I'm not sure how long that code will be good for. When I get more details, I'll put it in the description. But if you go there and enter the code, it should tell you whether or not it's still active. Well, that's it for this video. If you have any comments, that's what the comment section is for. And if you like this video, it turns out there's a like button on YouTube. You can click that. I don't know what it does exactly, but you should probably click it. Anyway, I will see you next time.